when you reflect on your 40 odd years of performing, is it as it as you expected? Did it turn out as you thought when you started? You're 19. Far beyond my wildest dreams, as it turned out. Who would have ever thought any band would have landed, lasted 40 years? We still play to 18, 20,000 people in the States and 80,000 people in South America and, I mean, all over the world. And who'd have thunk? Who would have thunk? Who'd have thunk, you know? And it's just been, it's been a magical journey. Major ups and downs, you know, arguments in the band, breaking up with the band, rehab, drug addiction, um, babies born, children, families, uh, American Idol, uh, to, to bring it all back again. And who'd have thunk? But it's been the music it's carried us. It's been the music. When I walk in front of someone new, they're thinking about don't want to miss a thing that they made love to the first time or dream on or walk this way or sweet emotion or, I mean, it's just, it's endless, right? And music is such a beautiful language because it gets in your ears. You can't close your ears off. admit it Aerosmith is the or was the most dif dysfunctional band on the planet mm. but yet it endured and why is that well uh, you know the Beatles broke up because they broke up we broke up five times already and I think in the breaking up there's a lot of making up and making up there's a new album and there's new thoughts and it evokes new emotions I mean can you imagine what it's like I hated Joe's guts <laughs> when he was looking for another lead singer. I mean, truly, I was, I was also high at the time from f the operations I had on my feet. Uh, who wouldn't be? You have to, you know, mm. you have to uh, um, recover, and you don't recover from major surgery sitting around watching TV. If your feet just singe. So whatever drugs I was on, I kept, st I kept taking. Wrong of me, but then uh, I fell off the stage, and they were looking for another lead singer and I just hated them to death and but then you make up and yeah, I got sober and I went back to him and I threatened him I said you better be careful because I'm on fire <laughs> uh, and so so it, it's it's kind of cyclical but with emotions and it's like a marriage that that breaks up but then falls in love again I, be, but it's not because well my, my wife and my ex-wife well we're friends now we're more than friends because we have to go on stage and make some money. We, we have to go on stage and be together to get that sound and put that song together to make everybody love it. And we love, first and foremost, doing that. So we're, it's almost like we're forced to be back together again. Uh, is it a codependent relationship or is it a, uh, there is an honest glue in there? Honest glue and honest love. You know, of course, wrapped up in codependency. I, I need Joe to sing that song. I need Joey to, to perform Walk This Way. I need, can I do with another band? Sure. But, but there's nothing like Aerosmith. It's, it's the first and foremost, and we still do it really good. Well, are you, you and Joe, the heartbeat of this band? Yes, but not just because we're on stage together and we spoke an hour before. We may, I think we're the heartbeat of this band because when we get back together, when we fight, you can feel it in the room. When we're back together, you can feel it in the room too. And that little bit of glue and energy and honey is what makes it the, the oh my God when you see us on stage. It's, it's just phenomenal. I just, I, I remember when, um, you know, I fell off the stage, we broken up. I, um, I went back because we were forced to do four more shows, one here in Maui one in all places, Abu Dhabi, of all places, and, uh, and one in S San Francisco, whatever. But I wasn't speaking to him. I was so angry. I just quit. I said, fuck it. That's it. I've had it. I'm not doing it anymore. I didn't even speak to him. I got dressed in a trailer, and I got taken out exactly five minutes before I went on stage, stood there, and waited to see my guy. I told him, give me the flashlight. I walked out. I looked at him and like, you know, with such hate and venom. Yes. Um, but I wasn't altogether upstairs. I, 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 you know, I went away to to a wonderful place called Betty Ford, you know, because of all the tumult and and my addictions came back because I simply 
was holding my own drugs, and I'm a drug addict. You can't do that. I was, I'm tempted by the euphoric recall. I just wound up taking them again, right? So I went away and um, got a chance to see how beautiful this band is. And what a fool I was for, for doing that again, but you know, it's not my fault. I can't help it. I'm a drug addict. I'm as good a drug addict as I am a singer and a father. And, and this guy you see, I'm just, I'm just that good at trying to make myself feel good. But <clears throat> it takes me down. It steals me like a crook. Mm. And so, uh, you know, I went away, got a chance to look at that, and came back and told the guys in the band. It, I realized I was really nothing without them. It was what I loved as much as being a father to my children. It was one of the biggest things I've done. The songs accumulated in my whole life. Who's achieved this? In the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and now Songwriters Hall of Fame. It's like, wait, what? And you're going to ruin it all because you want to snort something? <laughs> I don't think so. The influences came from English bands in the beginning, is that right? It came from uh, the Everly Brothers for me and of course the English bands is what, I mean, I, I, my first concert was um, uh, Janis Joplin and then I went and saw, uh, come on baby, let's do the twist. Uh, <laughs> what's his name? Um, uh, Chubby Checker. Thank you. I yes. went and saw him at the Steel Pier in 1948, <laughs> uh, from 1950. You were a baby. Oh, I was nine, you know, 58, something like that. Anyway, um, and after seeing that, I just went, what? And what, Janice what? and Mick, you know, and the, and the Kinks, and you know, these albums came in, came at a barrage at those of us who were listening to music. Jimi Hendrix, The Who, The Animals, The Kinks. Uh, you listen to those albums, listen to the albums, The Animals' first albums, The Pretty Things, I mean, just, there's nothing any bands have today that those guys didn't have trifold. Are you comfortable and do you like the inevitable comparisons uh, with Mick Jagger and the Stones? Oh God, I did in the beginning. I hated it. Oh. And then when I grew up to realize, yeah, of course <laughs> I look like him. He's the best. You know, whatever. I mean, if they think I look like him, so be it. I'm his bastard son or whatever. Um, Frankly, he should be happy. Yeah, I'll carry on his image. God bless me. I think Mick was the baddest boy in the block. He was, oh my God, Mick Jagger, uh, uh, Brian Jones, Anita Pallenberg, Keith Richards. Um, the best, the best. They lived it, they were it, and we emulated that. I emulated them. Uh, probably um, Joe Perry more, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jimmy, you, Jimmy Page or so forth, but you know, I truly got my high heels from Keith and the Beatles and uh, music, harmony from the Everly Brothers, um, how to put it together by the Beatles, but to act like Janis Joplin, I needed to act like, I needed someone to emulate, to pretend, fake it till you make it, Mick. Um, Have you met Mick Jagger? Oh yeah. And? Oh, he's wonderful. I'm not sure if he loves me that much. I love him. But we've hung out. I'll go see him and I'll... I mean, he came to me one night. We were doing something together. And he goes, what are you wearing tonight, darling? I'm going to forget it. You know, <laughs> and I've gone through his clothes backstage. And I love him. I think he's the best. Did he like the comparison, do you think? I think he... I don't know if he... You know what? They're so big. They're so the Rolling Stones that I would imagine anybody sitting about Aerosmith is like, pfft, like a fly off something. I, I, I'm not sure if, if he loves uh, any of our songs, you know. They truly took the early blues that America invented, did it a whole new way, and then put their bad boy shit on it. And they don't, they did it like no one else. I, I read where you said that um, if, to be a rock and roll star, you have to be a raging narcissist. I think you wrote that. <laughs> it's yeah. true, isn't it? Well, to be a good rock and roll star, you do. What else are you going to take and throw at people? <laughs> it, it, this, and you say you suffer and uh, from what you call LSD, lead singer's disease. Sure I do. It, what is that? 
Well, I don't know if it's all full of myself or full of others. I see this stuff in others that I love, the Stones, Joplin, and spot it, you got it. You know, it's like I saw it and I could feel it and I owned it and I became it. And then I took my family and my wild child stuff and narcissist, it's just, you know, and why not? What else are you gonna throw into the goop? <laughs> Any great actor is full of themselves. Well, you have to, it, it, some might call it confidence, mm -hmm. others might call it ego. Yeah. Um, is it, is it, do you have to be more than that? Well, yeah, you gotta know how to put it out there. You gotta know how to represent. You gotta, it's gotta be all that. You gotta be fabulous. You gotta feel so good about yourself that when others see you, they feel you. They don't just see you, they feel you. That's the secret. And, and Own it. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> you know, when I went to this, this last rehab, they said, um, you gotta be careful with your grandiosity. Really? <laughs> that made me who I am. But what they meant was in the outside world. It's hard to detach. I have multiple personalities. I have that crazy fuck that's on stage and I got the, the boy that has a teddy bear in my bed. You know, I sleep with a crystal in my hand. Uh, you know, or, or, or my T-Rex tooth that's 200 million years old. I got all crazy things that I do. And that makes I like you... to jump off the deck of my house naked. I, I'm just, just, there's just different sides and if you own it, it makes you have a wonderful, wonderful life. And I, I, I get that. I think you have to own it. But how does that sit with the rest of the band? Oh, they're jealous as hell of me. Are you <laughs> kidding? And it took me 30 years to realize that. You know, they, I never thought they liked me. I thought there was, there was all this animosity and stuff, and it was all just jealousy. And that's okay. I get it. So good for them. But I'm their lead singer, remember? They're sitting back there playing, and I'm out there having all the fun sometimes. Well, it, it's a tough thing, isn't it? Because just about every band has a lead singer, and that defines, at least to the public, that, that band. So you, there is no Aerosmith without you. There is. I'm not sure. Yeah. Not probably not. really. Not. Yeah, but, but there is no Aerosmith without Joe Perry either. I mean, you could kind of, sort of get away with it, but not really. You could probably find another singer for me, but it's just not the same. I mean, when one of those guys are out of the equation, it's just not the same. And I've come to really love that and embrace it. I don't think I, don't think I will ever, ever allow myself to have bad feelings about those guys anymore. I mean, it, sometimes it comes with the territory and they're so good, who else am I gonna get angry at? <laughs> but I can't live without them. I don't want to. I look around the stage now and it just makes me want to cry seeing the original band, Joey Kramer, Brad. And he's so happy now and good. And Tom Hamilton, you know, who came up with Sweet Emotion and, and uh, who I wrote that song with. And, but he came up with the bass line. It's like every night he plays that. It's so fantastic to think that we still have the original band. I mean, really? When you hear us on the radio, be it 40 years ago we wrote that song, we're still that now. You we are. can come to your town and we're gonna rape and pillage and make, your, make the mothers and fathers wish the kids didn't come see us. It's just that good, it's that much fun. Um, do you remember success when it first struck? Mm -hmm. What was that like? It was wonderful. I was 26 when I thought, oh my God. I, I remember walking down the street and a girl <clears throat> came up to Joe Perry and asked him for his autograph. And I laughed so hard, I went, really right now? <laughs> but I realized at that moment that he, that we're, you know, look out pretty mama, here we come. Here you come. And it was a great and wonderful feeling because we'd wanted it. Look, I was called, um, you know, terrible names when I was a kid, Pinhead and, um, nigger lips, you know, for a white boy that grew up in Yonk, in the Bronx, that's terrible. Now I'm honored by that. <laughs> but, um, you know, just beaten up and, you know, spit at and, you know, queer and all that stuff. And, and I guess um, in many ways to be in a rock and roll band, I mean, look. That's the ultimate I wasn't, revenge, Yeah, I it? wasn't uh, that accepted by the kids at school either. So I got a band together and played at the lunchroom and suddenly little Sally over there kind of liked me. So <laughs> it's all about that, you know, you know. 
it, 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 success brought money. Um, I mean, uh, outrageous numbers of records were sold. Yeah. Um, was that easy? The money? No, I always said, um, I heard stories about guys that, uh, that had a million dollars and blew it on whatever. I wasn't sure what back then, because I was too busy doing that what that steals money from people, you know, the old drugs. But uh, sure enough, it happened to me, you know. Uh, lost everything by the... Do you remember the first time you took uh, heroin? Oh, I remember the, f the first time. Not so much that, because by then, we were well in, 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 on the road to let's try anything. Remember, what was, it's a very what was glorified the drug, thing. What was the drug that got you on the road to anything? Oh, pot, right? For you, for everybody. Everybody smoked pot first, and I was not unlike anybody else, except it was 65 unheard of, very illegal, uh, and very exciting to do because the Stones were smoking pot and the Beatles were taking acid and all my heroes were doing it, so Keith was doing heroin, so why not? I mean, why not? And we had our first hit record and we were getting laid all the time and people were coming up with, with these, you know, Nepalese temple balls and uh, Malincrot pharmaceutical cocaine and just all these wonderful things. and. You know, you frown a little, but it's still good. Drugs are good, they make you feel good. Well, that... It's just that if you take it all the time, you're gonna die. Mm. You know, drugs get you out of what you're doing today. You got you all gonna go have a pop tonight at the bar. Why are you doing that? For the euphoria of it. It's not bad. Heroin is the best drug on the planet because little babies right now have burned beyond belief and they're giving them heroin to stop screaming. It, it's a drug that works well, you know, and cocaine is, is dribbled into the, um, into wounds when you're bleeding profusely so the doctor can in, get in there and mm. get you better. It's just when we abuse those drugs that they're bad. You, you and Joe were, as you know, tagged the toxic twins. Mm -hmm. How does that sit with you now? We still are, you know, we still can be toxic. You know, we fight toxically, we play Toxically. But you also took a lot of toxic drugs. Oh, sure we did. It, it was, was it true that you, you think that you blew something like $20 million on drugs? No, probably realistically, you know, five or six. Easy. Uh, th well, you know, somewhere around through. But it doesn't matter. You could also say I've snorted half a Peru, but, <laughs> you know, uh, it's what we did. And, you know, oddly enough, three quarters of the people watching this did the same thing. Y yes, you, it, it was The whole it world was, a was on drugs at one time. Correct. And, and another thing, most everybody's on drugs too right now. They're called pharmaceuticals. It's taken the world down, you know. Mm. But, uh, you know, the good news is I'm not anymore and it doesn't, it doesn't have to take daddy away from being a father. It doesn't have to take love out of being in a band with my fellow band members. It doesn't have to... It doesn't have to take me being a personality and showing up here on time to do an interview with you mm. or, to, or to show up. I can't wait to get to Australia. Did I tell you? One of my favorite places on the planet because of, I went there first. I wanted to hug a koala bear and to see a, a kangaroo, but you know, it's every day for you guys. But, you know, I dove the Great Barrier Reef. I went up to the mountain there and I chased flocks of toucans in a helicopter and just, oh my God, I, I'm, I can't wait to go to the Outback and follow some song lines and go to that giant red rock and, and befriend some Aborigines. I mean, I just love getting into the earth as she is for real, real now. I, I, I was going to ask you, uh, when you look at the world map and make decisions about where you want to tour, yeah. I, I am constantly amazed everyone's prepared to take the trip to Australia. Yeah. Um, you, you never had second thoughts? Oh, no. Besides which, I love on a plane. It's the only place my phone doesn't ring, and I can read a shitload of newspapers. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I just love sitting there with a bag full of magazines, you know, that I picked out, and just can't wait to get through. <laughs> Popular <laughs> Mechanics, to, like, you know, Us, and Ooze, and all these crazy magazines from all over the world, and get to Australia, and... 
Um, I'm just going to take you back to uh, the era when you were high. When you fell off the stage, um, that was a dreadful moment. Did you feel it was a dreadful moment at that time? Not at the time. Mm. No, what really happened was, you know, I had 12 years sobriety. I used to talk in jails and, 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 go and talk on the radio. It was wide open on the press. Everybody knew. I made it from 80, 88 to 2012, something like that. And then uh, uh, I had an ACL reconstruction, and I started dabbling because that, that took its toll. Just When Don't Wanna Miss a Thing came out, our first number one single. And it got me through that tour. Um, uh, my m mom and dad passed away in this last 10 years. Um, the children left. I got divorced. The kids left for, for college. Uh, I went through hepatitis C treatment. All of this stuff took its toll on me, and I wound up taking drugs slowly, little by little. You know, not out there every night, uh, you know, getting loaded in bars like most people would think. Um, and so I had this, then on top of all that, I had my, my, my feet operated on. I couldn't dance. I couldn't be an Aerosmith anymore. And that was like, what? I mean, that, I'm Italian. I can't be, uh, um, what's the, the disease people get when they have to take drugs because they're, oh my God, with depression. I don't have that. I couldn't have that ever. But I started to when my feet went out. And I couldn't, I realized I couldn't be an Aerosmith anymore. And so, uh, I, I went to a pain clinic and they gave me some drugs so I could go on tour. Little, minimal, but I took them and I fell off stage. It's what happened. Um, but it was, it was a terrible moment, not just because you fell off stage, you injured yourself, but it was that moment where everything imploded, the, the band were cranky at you and you were hurt that they didn't come and see you. It was a pivotal moment, it seems, in your life. Well, yeah, you know, it showed, it showed how e what little it would take to get them so angry and make the whole ship wobble, uh, you know, from management up and down. I mean, imagine I fell off the stage and I, I laid there and, and no one even came to my, my, my aid. They were so angry that their lead singer had fucked up so they don't make money anymore. Whatever the reasons were, it was just terrible whole thing uh, and that I um, had fallen off the stage and hurt myself so bad at the time um, it just showed how on on a negative side like I'll put it to you this way when I got good I didn't care about them anymore I only care about myself when I get good all they all change everything changes the Sun comes out because I got good I don't need them to get me to, to feel good anymore. When I got sober, I'm fine. In fact, look out, because I'm on fire. <laughs>